back after these messages. Hi, this is Mark Morell. I'm the host of Let's Voltron, the official Voltron podcast, and I'm here at San Diego Comic Con 2014, and I'm here with Claire Grant, an actress, co-founder of Team Unicorn, and a huge Voltron fan. Welcome, yes, Claire. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And we are here at the Man of Action booth at the uh, exhibit hall floor. Okay. Yes. And Man of Action, of course, has done things like Ben 10 and Marvel Avengers Assemble. And Ultimate Spider-Man. I so, play Titania on Avengers Assemble. Awesome. Yeah. You've done a lot of voice work, haven't I've, you? Yeah, yeah. All right, what else have you done? I know, I know you did some things on Robot Chicken, obviously. Yeah, well, right? um, and I originated a bounty hunter on Star Wars The Clone Wars called Lots Razzi. Oh, cool. And um, I did voices for Mad. Hulk, Hulk and the Agents of Smash, I, I voiced Titania on that as well. Nice. And I did... Um, uh, I did Black Widow on the Marvel on a Marvel Iron Man movie. Oh, so is uh, is would you say Titania is your character? Yeah. Nobody else can do it. Not like me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You're also involved with uh, Team Unicorn, obviously. Yes. And they're coming out with a new show called Action Hour, right? The Team Unicorn Saturday Action Fun Hour. Oh wow, that's a Saturday Action Fun Hour. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite a long title, isn't it? Yes, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what happens? It's a live action animation hybrid, um, mostly animation with live action bookends, and it's it's sort of like the A Team that oh, sort of setup, nice. you know. Um, and it's uh, it's it's basically like a Saturday morning cartoon show, you know, okay. from back in the '80s, and it's it's a culmination of all of our favorite Saturday morning shows, um, and. I, I mean, obviously, it's heavily Voltron influenced. Oh, good. I mean, all of our <laughs> robot unicorns come together to form a giant robot unicorn. All right, awesome. Yeah. That's. I, when do we get to see this? For oh, the first hopefully time? soon. We're um, just wrapping up the pilot now. We should deliver it next month. I, I mean, I've seen some some. And then it's up to Adult things. Swim what they do with it after that. But you know. Oh, is that where it's going to be? Yes. It's okay. With Adult Swim, we're going to show a trailer for it here at Comic Con at the Robot Chicken panel. Awesome, awesome. So look out for that one. Yes. We now return to Voltron, Defender of the Universe. I'd like to get into a little bit about Voltron. your your Voltron. Yes. Fandom. All right. When did you start getting involved with Voltron? Um. I honestly don't remember a time in my life where I didn't love Voltron. I remember being um, a kid and it came on in the mornings before school and it was the only thing that my brother and I both agreed on mm -hmm. that we would be allowed to watch together because, you know, the other, other, other than that it was like My Little Pony and he was really into G.I. Joe and me not so much but we both loved Voltron so we watched that together and I um, I would throw temper tantrums if my mom made me leave before the episode was over, and it literally it was over right when school was supposed to start. So I was pretty much late every day. <laughs> wow! All right. So, uh, what was the first time that you actually got to have something that had Voltron on it, some kind of Voltron merchandise? What was the first thing you ever got? Well, when I was a kid, I begged my mom for that metal you know, Voltron, where the lions came apart and then came together to form Voltron. Mm -hmm. And I, I never got that. That was, that was too expensive for my mom. So I had one of those little plastic guys that didn't move about this size. Mm -hmm. um, but then later, when Seth and I started dating for my very first Valentine's Day present, he tracked down one of those original metal Voltrons, but he tracked down one of the original Japanese ones and oh, had it wow. shipped to America for me. That's awesome. Yeah, it's my prized possession. I was like, oh. oh, I'm keeping you. Where do you keep that? In my office. I have an entire, I have an entire wall dedicated to my Voltron fandom. <laughs> okay, now, is it also true that, that you have, have... He's my freebie. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. A free pass with Voltron. <laughs> <laughs> so, what does Seth have a free pass with? Nothing. Nothing. With Claire Grant. That's okay. That's what he gets a free pass for. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, uh, we also know that you, you made a little contribution to the Voltron 30th anniversary book as well. I did, yes. What did you do there? I wrote a love letter um, as my, you know, six-year-old self to Voltron 
um, talking about how much I wanted to have little robot babies and um, <laughs> did it in crayon and put some really amazing stickers all over it. You know, it's pretty great. Obviously, it's been 30 years since Voltron came out and uh, people are rediscovering it through uh, being able to see it on YouTube and it's on like Hulu Plus, it's on uh, Netflix, it's on a whole bunch of things. We didn't have that opportunity when we were kids no. to be able to see it that way. Mm -hmm. Now, if you were to tell somebody, okay, I, I want you to check out Voltron, what are you going to tell them to look at first? I'd, I'd tell them to start with the original animated show from the, from the 80s. It was the greatest. That happened in the 80s, right? Yeah. Yeah, it was like 84 maybe? No, right. Yeah. Um, I would tell them to start there. Um, the Lion Voltron is my favorite. Obviously, you need to watch the car Voltron episodes, Vehicle Voltron, right. just so you can understand that. And then they had some really great crossover episodes that I, I There was remember. the Fleet of Doom special. Yeah, right. I loved it. Um, that moment where Pidge, I forgot what Vehicle Voltron's version of Pidge was. It was Chip. It was his Chip, younger was brother. Was that his name? Oh, it was his younger brother. Yeah. I remember the moment where they met each other in that dark hallway so vividly. It's like, oh, how cute. They're together. Mm -hmm. um, so you'd have to do that. And then I also really loved this latest Voltron show. Voltron but, Force. Yeah, Voltron Force. I loved it. I, I loved that you got to learn about the, the magic of Voltron and the history and I thought those new characters were really cool and I loved I loved combining new pilots with the original pilots but the original pilots became like the teachers right I thought that was really cool right because it followed after the original series yeah and it brought on the cadets yeah and you got to see them actually become Voltron pilots by the yeah. end of that first season and you know, which was the end of it's any so, season so good. It was, I loved it yeah I loved it yeah we and wanted there's more also, I wanted more too mm -hmm. you know there's also a Voltron short, you know the one I'm talking about? The Voltron live action short that Which, a fan made? Well, he's, oh, he's, oh, are you talking about uh, the, the Red Lion one? Yes. With Timi Timothy Olmundson. Yes. I loved that. Yeah. I loved that so much. I wish I wish that they had enough money and time to be able to pull out of the cockpit and actually see the Red Lion in space. That would have been so rad. Right. Over the years, there's been a lot of things that has included Voltron that has made Voltron a part of pop culture. And of course, you know, Seth has contributed to that by putting things on, robot on the Robot, robot chicken. chicken. The dance off that the he had off. with Sailor Moon, right? Right. Yeah, so Sailor Moon's my favorite character in history ever. I, I, I need to be her. And it made me so happy when I saw them having the dance off together. It was great. It was the greatest. And then there was a Vehicle Voltron one where <laughs> it took too long for Vehicle Voltron to come together because there were 15, so many vehicles. 15 vehicles coming into <laughs> one and they weren't able to save the day. Yeah, yeah. Sprite commercials over the years that have included rap artists. There's been uh, NBA All Stars that have come together in, in different forms or another. So good. Uh, it's it's just become a part yeah. of pop culture, and it's become a part of pop culture to say forming like Voltron or coming together like Voltron. Uh, yeah, Team Unicorn has done two two music videos, um, an original song, well, one original song and one parody, and. We talk about Voltron in, in both of them, and even one of them, we say we came together like the Lions of Voltron in Comic-Con, because that's actually how Team Unicorn all became friends and where it was born. Right, and you mentioned that on, on the Team Unicorn Facebook page. Yes. And that is so cool that that uh, <laughs> this this thing that was a cartoon back in 1984 has become part of your, you know, your daily life. Well, you know, so many people um, that grew up in the 80s, they're the people who are creating what's pop culture now right. and so they're taking the things that they grew up with and that they love the most and influence them and they're honoring it in amazing ways so we get a lot of we get a lot of influence from Voltron now and everything right and and you guys were also invited to be part of there were there were a couple things there was the THQ video game that came out yeah and you went to the the kickoff yes. show for that and you got to meet the, the original, original voice cast. actors, right? Oh, it was so great. There were so many pictures of me just gleeful and joyous to be there. It was, it was pretty awesome. And it was it was Michael Bell, it was BJ Ward, and Neil Ross. Yeah. Uh, did did you say anything to them? What did you? Oh what yeah, did you I say? did. I did. I told them all that I loved them and and that they were like the definition of my childhood. And it was such an honor to meet them. I got to do it with the rest of my Team Unicorn girls. It was really fun. 
Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, and, and then you've been on uh, Comic-Con panels for Voltron as well. Yeah, yeah, we did, uh, I think a couple years ago, we did a Voltron panel together. Right, Jeremy invited you to yeah. come along. And at the same time, we were hearing tinges about uh, a possible live-action movie at the time, Which right? Which would make my life. Yeah, it would make all of our <laughs> lives, I think. Yeah. All right, so now we have half of the whole team, right? We do. We have half the team. Yeah. Can you introduce, please? This is Rylea Vanderbilt. Hi, Hi Rylea. Hi, I'm here. I'm just uh, was walking by and saw my fellow unicorn. I was like, oh, I'll stop and say hello. Okay. I'll stop and uh, crash her podcast. <laughs> Did you know she was going to be here? She might have texted me. Oh, okay. I might have been in line getting my pass, and she's like, I'm here. You can meet me at the room. I was like, oh, that's right. Yeah, okay, I'll meet you. <laughs> so, so what happens if this show on, on Adult Swim really takes off? What are you guys going to do? Uh, we are going to beg Voltron to let Voltron come oh. and guest on our show. Oh, stop it. All we, want, stop. All we want is for stop. Voltron to be our TV boyfriend. Uh -oh. I know, right? Can that happen? I know, right? It's that like happen? my dream. Can that happen, please? <laughs> I hope Ponies so. Ponies and lions. I mean, that's, yeah, it's going to be great. It's going to be good. It's great. So who's doing all the writing for this? Well, we have uh, really talented writers. Um, Dan Milano, who is the creator of Greg the Bunny and also writes on Robot Chicken and a plethora of other amazing shows. Um, he is the, he's credited as the main writer on the, the pilot, which is great, and he would probably lead the room in the, in the actual series. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, we help. We add a lot of creative, uh, creative points and influence, but uh, they're, they're amazing. They do all the writing and make us look really good. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> we birth all the ideas, and we're like, wouldn't it be awesome if we had this? And they're like, well, let's, let's kind of execute this better than just this. And, you know, we, they, they work with us. Right. So this has been a really cool part of a creative process for you guys. Yeah. You know, coming coming together like this. Yeah. Now, what does it mean for you guys when, when you say coming together like Voltron? Well, I mean, I think what it is, it, it's this feeling that, yes, you can accomplish a lot by yourself. But when you have people that are like minded and love the same things as you, you can actually create something even larger and more amazing. And that's kind of for me, that's what that's what the idea of Voltron is and coming yeah. together like Voltron. Team Unicorn, that's, you know, it's, it's a thing. It's, it, we know we're stronger together than we are apart. Yeah, and, you know, with Voltron, they all pilot these individual robots, and that's super awesome. Mm -hmm. But when they come together, they have, they have to, like, be totally in sync to form this robot. Right. And they have to be, like, the perfect definition of a team because they're not just, at that point, individual parts going in and like taking down the big bad they have physically come together to take down the big bad and right. that is a true team right there that's like the definition of teamwork and right. that's what team unicorn tries to be about and there was an episode in that new voltron force cartoon where daniel was one of the cadets and he was flying black lion and he wasn't in sync with the rest of the team at all and mm -hmm. it really really mm -hmm. tore things up for them well, and that's the thing too like individually everyone's got certain skills and a certain skill set or they bring something that's you know amazing to the group but when you really try to do something somebody else is doing already or something that's not true to you then that's you're right it becomes out of sync and you know doesn't 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 end up so well always <laughs> so looking back now on what you guys have produced over the years are, are, are you saying wow I can't believe we did all that yeah, I mean, it was honestly just an accident. Riley and I were just hanging out, having coffee one day, and we're like, oh, wouldn't it be amazing if we were in Star Wars? That's never going to happen because there were no more. Few, there was no more of the future of Star Wars. And we were like, let's have a lightsaber battle and film it. And we were never going to do anything with it. We were honestly just going to have it for ourselves to cherish forever. And then one day she called me and she was like, so I hope you don't mind, but I entered this into the Star Wars Fan Film Awards. And I was like cool and people loved it and we won the star wars fan film awards we won two awards which is very unusual and and then from there like the next the next year riley was like hey um i'm gonna cosplay with these girls as the sailor scouts and i know that you have a sailor moon costume why don't you cosplay with us and i was like okay and it was the other girls of team unicorn that at that time wasn't team unicorn it was just girls who liked each other and were in the same thing so we all had such an amazing time doing the the cosplay together as, as a group. We just became fast friends. 
And then immediately after that, uh, creatively, just... creatively, it was like one of the girls, my Lynn, came up with the idea to parody California girls as geek and gamer girls. And right. people loved it so much, we were like, we should keep doing this. Mm-hmm. And yeah. we did. <laughs> now, did people ask you to do a sequel to that? Yeah, people have people have definitely wanted us to try to recreate the the lightning in a bottle that happened with Geek and Gamer Girls. And, right. you know, you never really know when something's going to hit and resonate with, with an audience or not. And we were very fortunate that that first video was um, at a time when geek girls weren't as loud and proud. And we were an anthem for geek girls to be loud and proud and go for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Just what? It just took off. Oh, it just took off. Yeah, and then, you know, it, the, the good thing, too, is, you know, the four of us, we are in entertainment. We're all actors and stuff. So it was great that we got to combine our geeky loves, because we're all nerds, and with also professional with skills. our professional <laughs> skills. And, you know, uh, people like it. So I hope they continue to like it. I hope we continue to make good stuff. All right, so... Other than the, the, the live action movie for Voltron, is there anything else that you think we might be able to get from DreamWorks? Personally, I would really love for someone out there to make quality, um, attainable Voltron costumes. Okay. If anyone wants to make me that. All right, so there was a basic Voltron costume that came out from Ruby's, but I think it, yeah, you're, you're right. It, it didn't have a certain you know, quality that you need Harry to have with Keegan. costumes narrated a panel for you guys right. um, years ago and a girlfriend of mine actually made her costume her uh, pink lion pilot costume right. and I have been coveting that costume for years so I know that it's I know that it's that they're out there I know that it's right. doable right so we just <laughs> we would like more costumes yes okay anything else a TV show a, a live TV action show. television show I would love that and a crossover with Team Unicorn and a crossover, and a crossover <laughs> with, with yes. Team Unicorn do you know okay. what I would also like to really talk about the fact that Voltron Force the coolest thing that they did in my opinion other than the mythology and the magic of it right. all um, I really enjoyed that the other lions also had special weapons that were specific to their skills and we got to bust that out or they right. are not a part of Voltron but they got to bust that out you know right. it was really cool seeing the other special weapons and seeing like Voltron use more than just a blazing sword not that I don't love the right. blazing sword because it's right. the blazing sword but <laughs> that was but, neat but yeah when they switched configurations yeah. like the, the green lion when the green lion became the center it was the uh, tech ninja Voltron with a boomerang so shield cool. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. And then when Red Line became the center, it was the blazing guns. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> of course. So, well, I want to thank you for joining us here at San oh, Diego Comic Con and talking about Voltron yes. on Let's Voltron, the official Anytime. Voltron podcast. And thank you, Relia, for, for joining us. Thanks for letting me crash. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> good, lu- good luck with everything you have thank going you. on with Team thank Unicorn you. and good luck with any, any acting, you know, thank roles you. that you get where you're doing the voices and everything. So, um, thank you for, so much for joining us on Let's My Voltron. Pleasure. All right. Thank you. Thank you.